This video is going to cover the topic of subtracting integers word problems. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of the page. The essential question to guide this video is what are key words or phrases that we need to interpret word problems with the subtraction of integers? Knowing what operation to use when we're doing a math activity is critical and we need to understand what a question or a real life situation um, is asking us to do or asking of us before we can correctly move forward and solve the problem. So before I show you a couple practice word problems, there are some words that we need to identify and I need to make sure that you have these in your notes just like I'm going to have them on the computer. So make sure you give yourself space just to record these phrases in a nice little box and organized manner. The first thing we're going to write down are words, kind of like clue words essentially, that will kind of signal to us that we are talking about positive integers. And a lot of times these kind of words can be thought of in kind of categories. So a lot of times when we're talking about integers, we're talking about money. Sometimes we're talking about movement, right? either in a football field or a submarine. And then of course there are some just other miscellaneous things as well. So some things under money, that's what I'll put first. So in relationship to money, if you hear things like earned or saved or deposited or a profit, those are things that are positive associations, right? Or things that are going with positive numbers. Whereas with movement, you might hear things like ascended or rose or climbed or gained. There are other synonyms that would fit along with these, of course, but this should give you a kind of a starting point. And there are other things, right? We talk about increased or if someone has won or if you're above, like above sea level, right? Those also are clues that we're talking about positive integers. And I'm wondering if there are some that you can think of, right, that you could bring in tomorrow to also share other words that you kind of associate with those positive numbers. And of course, since we've identified some positive clue words, we're going to also identify some negative clue words. And I'll use the same three categories. And those were, of course, money, movement, and other. So money terms might be things like spent, or it cost something, or you borrowed or withdrew something, or you took out something. Movement terms might include descended, fell, went down, dove. And maybe in other, we have things like lost or decreased or went below, like below sea level um, or lower. And of course, again, if you can think of some more, right, you can kind of make a little line here. Anything else that you can think of that you could share with us tomorrow to kind of build our list would be great. So we're going to try a couple story problems. And yes, you need to write these down. So make sure you give yourself time to neatly write these story problems down. There's just two, um, but I want you to have it as a resource and I want you to see how we're going to use that to interpret what the question's asking. So here's the first question that you need to have recorded. And again, write neatly, right? Make sure you have it all. So in Death Valley, California, the salt basins are 279 feet below sea level. An animal that can survive there is called the badwater snail. And if we know that a snail dug a hole and went down 13 feet from the floor of the basin, what elevation did the snail reach? So let's think about this for a moment. And of course, pause this as you're writing. Make sure you have it all down. But once you have it, let's think. I'm trying to see what integers I'm using and I'm trying to see what operation I need. So I know that I have 279 and that is below sea level. So I think I am going to start with a negative 279. And then it says that the snail dug a hole and went down 13 feet. So from wherever that snail started, right, at negative 279, he went down from there. So he went and subtracted 13 more feet, right? And that is our number sentence that matches this story. So we had negative 279 and we're subtracting a positive 13. We're, we're subtracting 13 more feet. And just to kind of semi model this, right? If we were to solve it, I of course would be going to negative 279 first 
And then I'm subtracting 13 more feet. So I need to actually go to the left. So I would move 13 more spaces right, to the left. And then I would be able to combine that and I would say, oh, I know how, where this snail ended up. The snail is, of course, at negative 292 feet. Right, so it just went further into the negatives. And let's do one more. So here we have Zelda, and Zelda went to the library and borrowed or took out 10 books. As soon as she left the library, she realized she didn't want four of them, so she turned around and returned those. And the question is, how many books did she borrow? And I know this is something we can probably just quickly say, oh, I know how many she borrowed. But I just want to show you how this would look with our integers and how this would be represented with a number sentence. So make sure you have this. And remember that took out, right, or borrow, is basically telling us that we are talking about a negative integer. So right now, Zelda to the library owes 10 books. So she's kind of in debt 10 books, right? And of course, luckily, the library doesn't see it that way, but it's kind of what we're thinking about, right? She has a debt of 10 books. And then she doesn't want four of them, so she returns them. So she's actually sort of taking away some of her debt. So what that means for our number sentence is that she's taking away the fact that she has borrowed four books, right? So she's taking away four of the books that she has borrowed. And it's represented here with a negative 10 minus negative 4. And if I was representing this on the number line, right, I would start by saying here she is owing 10 books, but then she's getting rid of the fact that she owes four of those books, right? So I have to go to the right, one, two, three, four, and that would land me here. So I know that of course, right, we all know this already, she's at a negative six. She owes six books. And it's funny to think about it with books, right? Like makes a bit more sense with money, but I just wanted to do these kind of friendly numbers here to show you that. But this would work just as well with money, right? If I owed, if Zelda owed $10 to someone and then she took away $4 of her debt, she's now only in debt $6, right? And we're going to have lots of time where we are going to try to decipher and understand different situations and how that can be applied and translated into our number sentences. So just know that the essential question for this video is what the keywords or phrases are that we're going to need to understand that process. And of course, you need to make sure you have those phrases that we pulled out recorded and then add any that you think you can share with us so we can kind of keep growing our list that will help us when we're trying to decipher this in class or in real life situations.